you, you, you've uh, made quite a lot of announcements today around assets, those assets you're now going to hang on to, those assets that you're not going to be selling. Could you just clear up for us what it is you're going to be hanging on to now and, and what it is that's still on the block? Well, we've made it very clear that uh, we're holding on to the two coking coal assets in Australia, Grosvenor and Murrumbah, and also the nickel business. So uh, the high quality top tier assets that we've been building the business around will retain. If you remember about 18 months ago, our debt was quite high. Commodities were dropping. The prognosis for China was pretty tough. We had to make some tough calls. We've made those calls. We've improved the business. We've cut our capital. Uh, and today our net debt number of 8.5 billion uh, is a testament to the progress we've made and we're in a different place. A very famous person once said that when the facts change, I, I change my opinion. I mean, hindsight is a very valuable thing, isn't it, Mark? But do you think in hindsight it, 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 it was not the right decision to, to put those uh, assets on the block at the time that that decision was taken? No, I think it was exactly the right decision. We had a tough period, the debt was high, we needed to do something. We've moved very hard on our costs. And don't forget, our cost work and our capital work has been the prime contributor to the improvement. We've sold one asset, niobium phosphate, which was a good business, but for us didn't necessarily lead us anywhere strategically. So we think we've made the right call. And at the same time, we've held out for value. We've delivered value. And I think we've done the right thing for shareholders. Um, tell us a bit more about your South African business. Uh, run us through what it is you're, you're saying today about South Africa, um, the, uh, the business there, what it, what it looks like now and what it could look like in five years. Look, we're, we're very pleased. We've done three years of major restructuring in South Africa. Our costs are down 30%. We're 40% more efficient, and I measure that in revenue per person, so the business is going very well. We've said that we'd be quite happy to stick with iron ore and our thermal coal business in South Africa. But at the same time, if people have ideas where they would be prepared for us to look at other options, we're open. As long as whatever we do has to be good for all of our shareholders, that's the criteria we use to assess how long or what position we'll take in South Africa for the long term. How difficult is it to move money out of South Africa right now, Mark? Is that something that's uh, factor being factored into your plans for asset sales in, in that country? Now, we're able to move uh, cash into the centre. There are certain requirements uh, and uh, processes that we have to go through, but we can do that. So from our point of view, we're happy with the configuration we have and we'd be happy to operate those assets for the long term. As I said, if someone has an idea where they think that they can add value to us or an idea that would add value for our shareholders, then we'd be open to that conversation. Does that mean you're shopping? No. Not at all. Very happy to run the assets <laughs> where we are. We can manage the processes very well. So we're very happy with where we are. Very happy with where you are. Uh, I was having a conversation a little earlier on with uh, one of our reporters who suggested that this is a sector that's learnt a lot from previous highs. So at times when, uh, when uh, c companies in the mining sector had money to spend, they maybe ploughed it into projects that weren't worth doing and actually they should have returned it to shareholders. But now the sector as a whole has learnt its lesson and will be returning more money to shareholders in this cycle. Is this something that, uh, uh, that, uh, that you would buy into? Is this a very changed sector? I, well, I can't talk about the sector. I think for us, it's been very clear. We've cut 31% out of our costs. Our margins have actually, despite a 3% reduction in price through the full 2016 compared to 15, we've actually improved our margins from 21% to 26%. So that's a pretty significant improvement. The underlying efficiencies are there. And for us, by the end of the year, we want to be in a position to start sharing that with our shareholders. They come first. They come first and also you've uh, talked about the importance of getting to investment grade and being very nearly back there. What is left to be done on that front? Well, I think uh, our numbers are getting pretty close to what you would assess as being investment grade, but in the end the rating agencies have to make that call. I won't try and preempt their call. From our point of view, we'll be in a position to pay a dividend by year end. That's where our focus is. We'll focus on what we can control and those that have to make decisions on the progress we make will make the decisions. 
What's your outlook for, for the key commodities uh, in terms of pricing, Mark? Difficult, to, as always, to call exactly where these prices are going to go, but we've seen resurgence in some of the, uh, some of the commodities that you mine as, as evidence in the numbers. But when we look at diamonds, platinum, copper, iron ore, coal, what are your forecasts? Uh, any upside that we've seen, is that sustainable? Look, I think uh, from our point of view, the bulks look pretty good at the moment in terms of prices, probably some downside during the course of the year. But the fact we've cut our costs means that we'll be robust through the cycle these days. We've cut our costs at Coomba, for example, from $77 to $29. I think the metals could do much better. We're hoping they certainly do much better. Diamonds, uh, we think the market is starting to steady. So uh, probably some downside in the bulks and maybe some upside in the metals. Do you have to make some aggressive assumptions about what Donald Trump will spend on infrastructure or what the Chinese economy will do to see metals prices go higher from here? No, not really. I think underlying demand and the fundamentals are pretty good. Uh, quite frankly, the lesson we've learned as a company over the last few years is try not to rely on others to create your fortune. You've got to put your own future in your hands, and that's what we've done in the last three years. So I'm not going to try and forecast Mr Trump or China for that matter. We're going to make sure we're a competitive business, improving our margins, and we will make sure that the future is in our hands and no one else's.